With the recent Nintendo Direct, we've finally gotten some info as to what's going on in the Splatoon 3 Side Order DLC. We have a brand new character, though veterans will recognize them as the artists behind the tracks that play during the Octo Expansion stages, a basic rundown of how gameplay is going to be handled, and some funny quips on behalf of Robo Pearl. But what I want to talk about today isn't any of that. Instead, what I want to talk about is what hasn't been shown, what I think will come of the campaign story at its end. And my big prediction? Tony Kensa is going to be the villain. That's a lot to say in one sentence, so let's step it back a bit. Actually, let's take two steps back. Back to the game where Tony Kensa first appeared, and had much more of an influence. That's right, it's time to head back to Splatoon 2. If you've ever played a game in Splatoon 2, whether that be ranked, league, or turf, you've probably seen one word. Kensa. Kensa, short for Tony Kensa, is a brand in both Splatoon 2 and 3. While Tony Kensa still makes clothes in Splatoon 3, the brand was a major producer of weapons in Splatoon 2. They even released in Kensa collections, something not done by any other brand. Kensa weapons and clothes are incredibly unique. They all have the distinct color scheme of black, red, and white. You won't find a single other hue on anything the brand produces. In Splatoon 2, Sheldon says that Kensa weapons are limited time collaborations, which always struck me as odd. Kensa weapons are incredibly successful, perhaps even more so than Kensa clothes. Go into a Splatoon 2 lobby right now, and it's nearly guaranteed that one out of eight players is carrying something by the brand. I can't help but wonder why these would be limited time. Perhaps to increase demand? Or is there a limited run for something much more sinister? like a marketing tool to obtain the funds needed to induce a new world order. Plus, running away with the money would also explain the changing of the brand's team, as confirmed in this tweet from June of 2022. Building up concepts from Splatoon 2 has been a trend as of the third installment. The enigmatic Mr. Grizz was given a form as a real-life bear and final boss in the return of the Mammalians campaign, and Harmony of the Chirpy Chips has found herself overseeing Atlantis. And now with Side Order, Deadfish acts as an overseer of the Spire of Order. With its limited colors, Tony Kensa has a sense of order with its branding. There's none of the colorful anarchy found in nearly every other corner of the franchise. Heck, speaking of order, every single weapon Tony Kensa ever made has one of these red clothespins somewhere. It's all incredibly uniform. New tweets about the DLC have been flooding our feeds as of late. Just look at all this black, white, and red. Reminds you of something, or rather, someone, doesn't it? And take a look at Tony Kent's corresponding mem cake from the Octo expansion. Constructed of glass and concrete, a city stays in dull, drab grays till we splash color on its streets. Huh, I wonder what city they're talking about. Of course, all of this is just speculation. I barely have anything to go on, hence the duration of this video. I've also never quite been good at predicting things. I'm more of the type of person who enjoys analyzing the implications of a complete project rather than part of a whole. But what do you think? Do I sound sane or have I gotten my screws loose? Mahi Megan out. Peace. <laughs>